Thank you for listening to the Mutual Audio Network. Please don't turn that dial. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And now, Decoder Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity of August Fenwick, one of the city's wealthiest men, in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his wife and partner, Kit Baxter Fenwick, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, Song of the Siren. All right, you lot. Enough clowning. I don't want to hear any more gibberish or old sea legends. If we're going to make port before nightfall, we need to look lively. Captain, one of the men has found something, sir. What is it now? Look here. He pulled it aboard in the nets a few minutes ago. Ah, it looks like a lot of old junk. Broken fishing gear, some personal effects. Is this what you brought me down for? The captain. All ahead. Keep to port as we take her out the bay. Careful now. Captain, please. The tidal eddies round these little islands pull in all sorts of flotsam. Anything that can wash off a deck, you know that. They drift for a while and settle in these little bays. We can't waste time on things like this. Do you hear the men talking? Spreading gossip like old housewives? <laughs> Siren songs. It'll be mermaids next. But, sir, look at this. A life ring. This is meant to excite my interest? Yes, sir. It might if you just take a minute. Azul Cielo. Yes, sir. Blue skies. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Fifteen years sailing these waters, I've picked up a few words of Spanish, you know. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, That's but... just what we've had. Blue skies and plenty of them. What makes you think this came from a boat in trouble? Because, sir, there was a radio report two nights ago asking all craft to watch for the Azul Cielo, a pleasure boat out of Havana. She was three days overdue, and they were afraid she might be wrecked. Wrecked? How? It's been two weeks of picture postcard weather. Who could wreck with seas this calm? Uh, Captain! What is it? A wreck, senor. To the S3 board, just beyond the bay. She looks like she pulled hard on the rocks. All right. Take us over. Slowly and carefully. You see, Captain? They may have struck on those submerged rocks. Uh, What kind of fool wrecks in weather this perfect? Those formations are on every chart from the last 50 years. And if they ran aground, why didn't they radio for help? We'll know in a minute. Maybe they... Captain! I see it. Thunder. The thing looks like it was practically torn apart. The seas have been calm. No wind to speak of. If there were a storm, I could understand this kind of damage. What could force a ship to drive itself against the rocks hard enough to cause this? Only one thing, boy. Only one thing. A sweet voice that calls sailors to the grave. The song of the siren. Explain this one to me again. Which part? The dozen or more ships that have been wrecked in these waters in the last few weeks? Or the persistent rumors that they've been lured to their doom by some kind of mysterious siren song? Neither. The part where we hang around the Caribbean, solving crimes and getting a tan. I tan. You freckle. I'm Dutch-Irish. I come from a long line of very pale people. That's the island over there. Port or starboard? Over there. Roger that landlubber. And I was just asking, not that I couldn't get used to this, I think globe-trotting adventuring suits you. Me? You haven't worn a necktie in weeks and you've never looked happier. And we still had Ma Baxter underfoot until three days ago. I think she enjoyed her holiday. Now that she's gone, we can have one. 
Hunting sirens? A bit off our usual beat, I grant you, but when in Rome... Cuba. As you say... Yes, this is the one, I'm sure of it. Look at this chart. And driving the boat here. Does that really involve a great deal of concentration? While we investigate a series of mysterious shipwrecks? Point taken. Perhaps I should just describe the chart to you. And there's my guess. The wrecked ships have all been found in coves and inlets around a dozen small islands frequented by fishermen and pleasure craft. All apparently wrecked in fair weather and washed up on rock formations well known in the area. Other sailors in these waters have reported a mysterious high-pitched cry unlike anything they have ever heard. If there is any pattern to the wrecks, it doesn't seem related to the known currents and tides. Indeed, the only connection I can find is that island dead ahead. How many ships ran aground here? Exactly zero. Which is remarkable because... It is the only island nearby where they didn't. Aha! Uh-huh. Not to mention it is neatly in the epicenter of the danger zone. I'd say aha uh-huh again, but I think you've got the picture. I really do. We should be able to make the island before nightfall. Oh, well, not by much. Look at you. You're enjoying yourself. Aren't you? Well, sure, but... Picking up a mystery on a lark, playing hero on vacation. It's a little less grim than your usual standard. Kit, remember, I've spent the last four years living under a shadow. Even when we first married, I knew there was a chance that you were fated to die in a death trap meant for me. Now that I'm free of that at last, well, it changes things. Does it? I expected that we would wear those masks until we died, but part of me didn't expect to live this long. We've had some luck. You can knock on wood now. Yes, Gus. You really thinking about packing it in? I don't know. Probably not. Times are still dark in spite of a few weeks of sunshine. The people that needed us before still do. The city still needs her champions. Will that fight ever be over, with or without us? No. Globetrotting adventurer wouldn't be such a bad gig. No, it wouldn't. And if we don't do something about the grandchild situation, my mother might burst. I got that impression, mostly from the way she mentioned it every 11 seconds. Are you thinking about this now? If you can daydream, I can too. But when you packed the luggage to send back with my mother, I noticed you hung on to our masks and get-ups. Mm, I did at that, and I think we may need them. Why do you say that? Cut the engines. I think I heard something. Well? Because unless I miss my guess, that was the cry of our siren. Quickly and quietly, let's try to put some distance between ourselves and the boat. To make sure we can't possibly escape? If you like. Come on, up here. Where are we going? No idea. Then, uh, why do we have to take the route that runs up a cliff face? It's the least likely direction for anyone to start looking for us if they find the boat. You make a good case. Mm. Glad we changed into our hero duds first. I'd hate to try and make this climb without the static shoes, especially in the dark. There's a little bit of moonlight. Not enough to be useful. Just enough for me to appreciate the scenery. What scenery? Oh, I get it. The cat suit still does it for you after all this time, does it? I'm only human. I wondered why you wanted me to go first. <laughs> there really is a case here, right? This isn't just your idea of a date night. I'll keep you posted. Careful. These rocks are loose. Perhaps we should finish the climb with the grapple guns. <sighs> Remind me. Why do we want to get to the top so badly? It beats crashing down into the rocks and surf below. Yes, it does. I also thought it might afford a better opportunity to reconnoiter the island from high ground. It's dark out. Night vision lenses. A touche. Think we can get a solid grip with the grapples? Wait. What? Something. I don't know. Like, like we were being watched. Yes. I feel it too. It's eerie. I can't see anything below. Whoa! What was that? There's something out here. Something big. There it is again. It's all around us. I can't get a look at it. It's, it's too fast. Uh, boss? I hear it. 
I think there's more than one of them. Let's see. It's in the air. In the hair behind us. I think we've found our sirens. I think they've found us. Whoa. Are you all right? Something hit the rock wall beside me. I think they're trying to knock us down. They're trying to do something all right. I don't much feel like finding out what. Grapple guns. Do it. Are you okay? I'm all right. Quickly, break for the trees. Go. Is it gone? Funny thing, I'm not that wild about sticking my head back out just yet. I'll allow it. Thanks. Were those, uh, sirens? Sirens are meant to be evil spirits disguised as beautiful women who sing a hypnotic song that lures sailors to ruin. Thanks, I read the Odyssey. Really? You want to retract that note of surprise? It was intended to be a, a note of finding you even more attractive than before if such a thing were possible. Be a good boy and stick your head out to look for evil spirits. Yes, boss. I think we're clear. Really? Admittedly, I have no idea what I'm looking for. See anything huge hovering in the air, looking as if it meant to eat us? Mm, no. Super. Can we go home now? Certainly. The boat is at the bottom of the cliff. Ah, point taken. Yes, since we're here for the night, at least... We might as well take a look around. If we can find a reasonable amount of ground cover. There is that. Come on. This is crazy, even for us. Look, I know you don't like to use the night vision settings in your goggles, but if we are going to trek through a jungle in the dark... Way ahead of you, Pappy. Let's see here. Oh. Hey! What is it? I haven't used these in so long, they're on a different setting. Tap the main control twice for night vision. I haven't forgotten how to use them. You should see what I'm seeing is all. Over there. What function are you using? The one with all the blue shimmers. Energy field cascade? Can't imagine that will yield much of a... Oh, hello. Yeah, that's what I said. I don't go in for these babies like you do, but I know that's not what I expect to see on a deserted island. You're right, Squirrel. There is clearly some significant power being channeled, generated, distributed. Someone is being quite industrious indeed on the south end of the island. There must be some kind of facility well hidden unless you happen to be looking at stray energy fields invisible to the naked eye. Can you tell what kind of power they're using? Some of it looks like it comes from a plain old vanilla electrical grid. But there's something else... Something I don't recognize. Hmm, at least we know what direction to walk in. Well, there is that. Any theories? None. You? Mm, how about mad scientists with some kind of magno ray? Wrecking ships and looting them? This far off a major shipping route. You gotta start somewhere. And the giant unseen flying things with the unearthly cry? All right, so there are still some holes. One or two. But whomever or whatever our siren is, they have a date with the Red Panda. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Dakota Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Oh, boy. Did I ever mention that the jungle isn't really my thing? No tall buildings to swing down from? You read my mind. Mm. After two hours of hiking through these woods, I'm missing a nice clear glide over the rooftops like no tomorrow. See? Once crime fighting is in your blood... Don't start. What's that up ahead? I don't see anything. There's a clearing. Some exposed rocks. Over there. I see it, but I don't... Wait. Boss, it's a man. It was. Come on. Oh, no. Don't look, Squirrel. Don't treat me like I'm delicate. There's no need for both of us to look. Keep your eyes on the skies and the trees around us. We're sitting ducks out here. Okay. Thanks. Well, that is odd. What? His identity papers say he was Clifford Waits. I know that name. 
He was on the passenger list of the Azul Cielo. Yes. The Azul Cielo was found abandoned and wrecked on an island miles from here. Yes. So, how did he get way up here? My best guess is that he was... dropped. What? His head is caved in. It looks like a high-speed impact with these rocks. He must have been very near terminal velocity when he landed to do this kind of damage. An airplane? I don't think so. There are gashes on his arms and torso. Nothing that would have been fatal, but it looks like they were caused by... By what? Talons, claws, I don't know what to call them, but I've never seen anything like this. Boss, there's something moving out there. Where? Ten o'clock high. Do you think it sees us? I can't even tell what it is through this mist. Too big for a bird. Let's get to cover, quickly. Go! Let's make several assumptions. Let's. Let us assume, for starters, that Clifford Waits was carried away from the Azul Cielo and dropped from a great height. Seems fair. Wasn't a small man. What could possibly do that? At a guess, I'd say that whatever it is just flew overhead, and its brothers tried to shake us off the cliff. Granted. So what are we dealing with? Man, machine, or monster? In a nutshell. A machine would explain some of the power readings we saw in the facility on the far end of the island. It would. And some of those energies were unlike anything we've ever seen. So, one vote for the machine. Yes, but... But? That corpse was not of recent vintage. Perhaps five days, perhaps more to judge by the rate of decay and insect infestation. So... So, except for the wounds sustained before death, the flesh was otherwise untouched. Five days in a jungle, there should be nothing left but bones... Unless the jungle's been wiped clean of everything bigger than a church mouse. By a new top-level predator, yes. Score one for the monster. Except there's an intelligence at play here. Attack the boats when they're near the surrounding islands, but never this one. Invite no investigation, attract no attention. That's got to be a point for man. So where are we? Man, machine, or monster? D. D. All, All of, of the, the above. above. I hate multiple choice. Come on. That facility is the only place we're likely to find any answers, and we've got to reach it before dawn. Hi. Hello. I uh, see you found some cards. I noticed that. They sound German. I noticed that, too. They're also in full Nazi uniform. They sure know how to keep a low profile. Why wear uniforms on a secret base? Probably in the twin beliefs that no one will ever find them and that no one could possibly escape if they did. I hate these guys. They're gone. What did you find? Not much. This building looks like administration to me. That one's a barracks, and not too large at that. Encouraging. There's another building further on. It smells like a stable, but it looks like an aircraft hangar. I saw that. No runway. But whatever is causing the unusual energy readings, he's in that building. The power generators are over there. And our tickets home are over there. Boat launch with a couple of fast-looking jobbies. We need to figure out what we're dealing with first. About that, I found a sign. They put a sign up at a secret base? Did I mention I hate these guys? What did it say? I don't read German. I wrote it down. Uh, mine's none too good. Read it to me. Okay. Moglischkeit. I have no idea what that means. There's a good start. Na, Ausbildung des Grunds. Aus... Uh, Testing grounds, training grounds. Three hundred big. Uh, thirty-three training grounds. Thirty-three. Getting better. Uh, donor edesi Ariel Stahl. What? Donor. I heard you. Thunder Lizard Aerial Squadron. Thunder Lizard. Dinosaurs? You mean those siren songs were really... The cries of some kind of pterodactyl being trained for use as a Nazi weapon. Von Schlitz! He must have... But everything I've learned about his escape from the bubble world we trapped him in says he had to destroy all of it in order to escape 
alone. He must have been taking dinosaurs from there before we ever arrived. Back to his lab in the Amazon. How did we never see this coming? He was working on telepathic and empathic controls for the beasts. If he's perfected his designs, there is no telling what the consequences could be. Is everything set? One charge on the primary generator, one on the power relays. Both timers set to blow in a little over four minutes. Not much time. Or too much if they catch us here. I wish we had more firepower. If those charges blow when they're supposed to, they'll do plenty of damage. We need to get in these stables and do some more first. Gotcha. Two guards, both near that granddaddy machine, just there. Which one's mine? The one with the glasses. Thanks. Let's go! Squirrel, where are you going? Red Panda, will you just look in these stalls? We don't have much time. Oh, dear Lord. You said it. These are... These are... I'm no expert, but these don't look like the pterodactyl we saw in the Amazon. These are huge! Von Schlitz has had time to make some improvements. I wonder if he's modified the land beasts this much. Look at the machinery. It's, it's built right into them. Yes. Those telepathic relays allow for direct mental interface between the rider and the beast. Man, machine, and monster. All of the above. There are... There are about 80 of them. Even the smell in here. The Nazis must have been using the civilian craft as training exercises. Red Panda... This is training ground 33. Are there 32 more like this? We'd be lucky if there were only that many, Squirrel. Air squadrons like this one, heavy cavalry riding massive carnivores. Who knows what else? The Nazis could have them hidden all over the globe. But they're about to have one less. What can we do? What can anyone do against this? We don't have time for doubt. The telepathic relays are all remotely powered by this device. I haven't seen the plans for Von Schlitz's prototype in some time, but I recall it had a single flaw. If the input power exceeds the specifications for the relay, it would feed back into the creature's nervous system. Which means what? Which means I turn these dials to maximum and you throw that switch. Not just now, thank you. Feedback loop destroys these monsters and any others fed by this particular system. They probably scream like banshees. You and I run like mad before the entire Third Reich gets in here. And then the power plant blows and takes out half the complex. Hopefully not the half we're in at the time. Got it. Meet you at the speedboats. Ready? Do it. It's been over an hour. See anything behind us? Not a thing. But keep the speed up. It'll be dawn soon. Quite a night. That it was. You've been quiet. Have I? You have, actually. We're not giving up the masks anytime soon, are we? I don't think so, Kit. We've made it through some rough times, there's no doubt. But I have a feeling things are about to get a great deal worse. The Nazis wouldn't be building a secret army of dinosaurs if they didn't plan to use them. And I honestly don't even know who we could tell. You and me against the world, huh? You and me against the world. Possibly quite literally. concludes another adventure of the Red Panda. This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! Thank you.
The Red Panda Adventures, episode 57, Song of the Siren, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Peter Higginson, Kevin Robinson, Stephen Burley, Clarissa Dunnerlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. Hello, I'm John Bell of Bells in the Battery, along with my associates, Arnie Kunch... I can introduce myself, thank you very much. All right. Hi, I'm Arnie Kunchfine. That's it? That's it. And also, do you want me to introduce you, Brad? Well, of course, Mr. Bell, that's your job as host. Thank you, Brad. And I'd like to introduce Brad... Hold it. What? Here's your script. Script? (laughs) Well, you gotta know what to say. All right. And introducing Brad Montworth, a salesman, incomparable public relations expert, and, of course, unrivaled attorney at law. No, come on, you know how to say it, Mr. Bell. Unrivaled attorney Attorney at at law. law. Oh, Mr. Bell, you shouldn't say those things. You make me blush. Can I do my introduction over again? No. We're here for an important reason. Very important. Indeed. If you think you deserve significant financial compensation, call Brad Motworth, attorney Attorney at at law. law. Oh, boy. At 555-41. No, 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 no. We're here to remind everybody to take steps to avoid the coronavirus. Yeah, don't catch it. Because there's no one you can sue. Wash your hands thoroughly and keep social distancing. What? Social distancing. One more time. Stay about six feet away from everybody else. Right, very good. Oh, I gotta wash my hands thoroughly. I don't want to get me this corona. Ooh, keep your distance now. Socially. I want to keep feeling fine, corona. Never gonna stop getting squirts from my Purell. I'm always gonna buy all the toilet paper. Don't get no closer, huh? Beat it, huh? Far enough where I can't see your eyes, Corona. An illness history is not for me. Uh uh-uh. uh. Don't want to try your COVID on for size, Corona. Never gonna touch. Stay away. My epidermis never wants to be close to where that nasty germ is. Bye, 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 bye. Woo! Bye, Corona. Fly, Corona. Captain Bly, Corona. What? Pumpkin pie, Corona. Now wait a minute. Have a Corona. Goodbye, Corona. Good riddance.